So how long does it take to cure SIBO? My name is Dr. Terranella, and in this video, I'm going to discuss some things that help me understand what's going on with patients with SIBO to help better uh, guide them along the treatment path. We're going to use some illustrations, a sample report, and some other things to give you a better understanding of what's going on with your SIBO at different phases of the treatment uh, to help keep you on track with your treatment protocols uh, and to help you better understand what's going on. So if this is something that interests you, interests you keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the, um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So what we want to address in this video is how long should it take or how long does it take to heal or cure your SIBO. And first thing I would uh, note about this is that we're only getting an approximation of, uh, in any case, when you know someone gives you an answer about this, it's only an approximation because first of all, we're assuming, you know, from whatever testing you did, that you actually do have SIBO. And there are false positives and false negatives with these tests. Unless you did an actual biopsy of the small intestine, we don't know with 100% certainty that, um, that that's what it is. Uh, and so um, chances are, though, if you have all the symptoms and, you know, the test is positive, there's a good chance there's some imbalance going on in your intestines. And treating it as if it's SIBO likely will help the symptoms that you're having. So, so keep that in mind. Um, and then, you know, th these models that we use, the tests that we use are just approximations of what's actually going on there. And I'm going to dive into that, um, in a little more detail here in a second, but, um, chances are, if you, you know, are asking this question, how long does it take? You've already sort of, uh, experienced some of the treatment and maybe you got worse or you didn't get as uh, much improvement as you expected. And there are reasons for that and you shouldn't abandon uh, your treatment just because uh, you didn't get the results you're expecting. So if you're somebody that tends to be, uh, you know, need a little more certainty in your treatment and you're not sort of just go with the, uh, the treatment approach of the doctor uh, or the practitioner, you may want to uh, rely heavily on testing and retesting. It is going to cost you a little bit more money uh, to be testing all the time, but at least you'll have more certainty on what's going on. So we're going to discuss in more detail what sort of things can go wrong and why you may not be getting the, the results that you expect and really how long uh, should it take, how long does it take to treat and or heal SIBO. So when you have SIBO, uh, what this stands for, and you may or may not know this already, but I'll just state it anyways, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So when we have your, uh, you know, you sort of have three compartments in your intestines. You have the stomach, uh, let's say, and then you have the small intestine and then the large intestine. And so the uh, large intestine is supposed to have bacteria in it the small intestine and stomach have less microbes. Now they, they do probably have some uh, small amounts, but not nearly as much as what's in the large intestine. And the problem is some of the bugs from the large intestine get into the small intestine. And that creates gas and creates fermentation, which has byproducts, one of which is gas and other byproducts that can get into your body. So when you have a uh, a small intestine that has uh, excess microbes in it, uh, that's what we're looking at when we have SIBO. And one of the things that uh, may be relevant for you is to sort of think about it in terms of if this is your small intestine, 
how much uh, of this small intestine is filled with microbes. Uh, so if this is, let's reorient it this way. So if this is the top and the stomach is over here, uh, and then this is where we would connect to the large intestine, how much of this is filled with microbes? Uh, is it just one little section? This one section, is it two or is it three? I mean, this is just an illustration. It doesn't actually look like this, but is it, you know, a third? Is it two thirds? Is it, you know, the full uh, length of it have ba bacteria in there? And when you kind of understand that, you can get an idea of how long it's going to take for you to, uh, to actually cure or start to see some results with your treatments. Um, and so now I want to turn to an actual hydrogen breath test to show how you can overlay that with a model like this to kind of get a better picture of how long it's going to take and what sort of things you should be thinking okay, about. So this is a sample uh, SIBO hydrogen breath test. Um, and so this is a um, hydrogen and methane breath test. So two types of gases that might show up on your breath test. And so there's just a sample report. Um, and so when we're looking at this, we can kind of overlay it with that, uh, um, those tubes that I was showing uh, to approximate how much bacteria are present. Um, and from that, we can sort of deduce a plan of action of, you know, how long this might take. Now, it's never going to be 100% certain, but you can start to get a general feel for what that might look like. Um, so starting off, uh, your baseline is your baseline. So if you get a really large spike here, you know, that means most of the small intestine is, or actually with your baseline, you would expect to have, uh, you know, pretty small amounts, but because you're not consuming fermentable uh, substance. But at 20 minutes, you know, if you get a large spike here, uh, you know, in the hundreds, uh, then we're going to expect that a lot of the intestines are filled with these bacteria. And then typically what you'll see is all the other ones, uh, the 40 minute, 60 minute, 90 minute will also be high. Um, sometimes you could have, uh, you know, things that get mixed up. Somebody did a wrong test and you'll see a spike and then it kind of comes all the way down. You know, that would be more, uh, you might want to repeat the test, but given the, you know, sort of assuming uh, the, the latter case where it's high from the beginning and kind of comes across, we would expect that to be approximate, approximating uh, what it's telling us, in other words, is that most of the small intestine has bacteria in it, uh, in, in its uh, excessive microbes in the small intestine. Now, sometimes you'll see all sort of like, so starting at two, maybe it goes to nine and then stays at nine, then goes to 10. Then all of a sudden at 90 minutes, it spikes up to 60 or even 40, let's say. Uh, so that's a mild positive and we're sort of approximating a case like that to have you know, maybe just in the lower third or even lower quarter of the intestine. So usually, you know, we cut it off at 90, sometimes 120 minutes, but um, 90 is usually the um, the cutoff time uh, to for a positive. So, um, so that sort of gives you an idea uh, of how much uh, microbes are present in the intestines. And then you basically overlay uh, your treatment strategy or length of time based on that. So if it's, uh, you know, a spike at the first interval uh, after the baseline, then, you know, you're looking more at probably 12 months, maybe more, um, depending on how tolerant you are of the treatments. So sometimes it uh, you, you can only do a treatment like once every four months um, and it only lasts for three weeks, then that's gonna take a lot longer. Um, and there's a lot of other things that can be going on in the intestines outside of just bacterial overgrowth. So we have to keep those things in mind, but when there's a lot present in the on the hydrogen breath test, generally it's gonna take you know, a lot longer. So uh, whereas, you know, something that spikes at the 90 minute and is only roughly, you know, like 
double what the baseline was or maybe triple what the baseline was, that may be, you know, less than six months, maybe even three months in, you know, everything's all kind of wrapped up. And also you're going to have more symptom improvement right from the right from the beginning. That's sort of what's expected. And so if you're not getting those expect expected results, you know, you may be looking at something else like a false positive or there's something else going on in addition to what you're seeing on this test. So in the case where you're having uh, a spike early on, you know, we might not expect to see a whole lot of improvement right in the beginning of treatment. And in addition to that, you may also expect someone to feel a lot worse um, and you may need to take things slower and kind of pulse the treatment. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a, you know, better understanding. I can't give absolutes because every case is kind of different, but generally speaking, you know, when there's more uh, positive, uh, higher um, uh, hydrogen or methane uh, counts, it's going to take a lot longer. I should also note too that the methane, when those are positive, those tend to be a little bit more challenging to treat and uh, do probably take about twice as long uh, to get those numbers to uh, actually respond and to reduce the, those ba bacteria in the intestines. Um, and so usually use you know slightly different treatment strategies for them, but uh, it also depends how the person's responding. So um, so there you go. That's uh, you know should give you some understanding of. Uh, how long it generally takes to cure or heal SIBO. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little better understanding of how long it might take to cure or heal your SIBO. Uh, if you do have questions about the content here, please ask it in the comment section. I'll be happy to try to help. Sometimes, you know, with individual situations, it's a little bit hard to tell, but I'll do my best. Uh, if you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.